What's up, Fish Tank people? FishTankTV.com, Dawson's Fish Tanks, bringing it to you on a Sunday with yet another sick fish room from St. Louis. Check this out, folks. Steve Eady's house. Now, look, the man's single, so he can get away with a little bit more than some of us that are uh, married or with girlfriends, but check this out. Uh, he's got these ruby barbs over here. I'm upstairs in his, like, living room. I may have gotten the name wrong on that, he told me. But a nice big hex right here. Got the loaches going on. Really a cool tank. All low tech too. Very little light. I mean, you can see hardly, you know, not a whole lot of light. Basic, easy plants. And then you pan this way. And you see, boom! 135 gallon. Not a 125, but 135 gallon tank. Uh, he's running the old school YouTube Power Combat Compacts on it. About a hundred cardinal tetras. The ones at the top are uh, Congo tetras, which I thought would be a little more jiggity. They seem to be pretty chill in here, though. And then a whole bunch of quarry cats. I'm gonna try to zoom in. He just fed them for us, but this is his upstairs. Try to scroll right in there for those guys. Tons and tons and tons of quarry cats. Uh, I'm gonna do the best I can on some of the species in here. He's got the real tall hyphen one in there. You see that? And he's also got the ones with the, the white with the spots. Those are the uh, the Weitzman eye. And he's got uh, some Sturbays in there as well. So this tank by itself deserves a, a full shot back out here. Show you guys the full deal. Love it too because he's always got good seating around his all of his tanks. So definitely uh, a cool setup. All low tech. You know, Crips, this is actually the Apontaton Olvacious over there is that bright neon one, your standard swords. And then this is a Barclay Longifolia, which I'm actually going to be able to get some of this from Gary. So I'm real pumped about that. And he's got some other Rasboras in the back there. But that's actually not a Crip, that's a Barclay Longifolia full size. I don't see a big stock coming out of it, but. So very fun, cool setup here. He's running a Fubal 404, and I think a Penguin uh, Hang On Back on there. But then as we roll down, because there's a lot more going on, we say bye to this. You walk down the steps, you check this out, and you can see from here where we're headed. He's got some cichlids over here, yellow labs going on. Again, good seating, chilling, places to check it out. And I don't know my Malawi's that well, but the Malawi cichlids. And there's some Tanganyikans. Hey, Steve, what are these Tanganyikans in here? Uh, oh, uh, are these Tanganyikans? The, the bowfront? Yeah, the bowfront. Uh, transcriptus. Transcriptus. Julia Chromus transcriptus. Julia transcriptus. He's got real little ones in here. We'll keep rolling, look at this, into here. Boom, boom, boom. Start here. Oh, yeah. So he's got the big... The big Brokus Corys. I mean, look at how monster that Cory Cat is, folks. Monster guy. I've got to take the other side. What type of uh, geos? A big, a deep 120. Hey Steve, what kind of what kind of a is that? Uh Labiatas. Labiatas. Where's where are those from? Um might be Uruguay. Uruguay? South American. Are they are they both there's a different species though, right? No, they're are those two, same? They're two males and then the, there's a little small one that's a female, which I think may be stunted. I don't know that the male female disparity is that bad. Alright, and this is this is the man right here, Steve Eddie. Say hello to everyone. Hello. What, Wonderful fish tank room, man. And then give us give us the tour, man. What do we got in here? These are the uh, Neil Lampologus multifasciata shell dwellers. Uh, they live in colonies of thousands in the lake uh, in little shell beds. And they just breed like rabbits in there. So the more of them you have, the easier it is to... I mean, it uh, is. Once they get established, I mean, they'll just they'll completely overpopulate. I've had that colony for probably 15 years, and I'm sure I pulled out over a thousand fish out of that tank. Really? And they just keep cranking. Something about how many that are in there that keeps them? Is it like a, a balance level with there's so yeah, many well, of them? They're, what, what's great about them is they're true colony spawners. So many cichlids are territorial, 
but two shells can be touching each other. They'll be a pair in each shell, and they're fine with it. Wow. I'm and the fry come out. They, they don't uh, attack each other's fry. Uh, there's babies in here. I'm sure we'll find uh, a nest in here somewhere where they're wandering out. There's some. You see some, yeah, some smaller ones there in the back. Awesome. I don't see any really tiny ones at the moment. Still, I see some, yeah, little guys in the back there, though. Are those wow, that's cool that they can all just get along like that. And most, as I said, most cichlids have to have, you know, discrete territory and a little separation from somebody else. But these guys are just absolute true colony spawners. Yeah, those are hot. I got to go back to the brocus here. I caught one of these in Peru. Mm -hmm. And I dropped it and I was like, oh shit. And I quickly scooped it. I was able to get it back in the net again. But yeah, I love those big brocus. And then we're going to keep moving. What is this guy? I love the eyeballs on this guy. Like uh, mascot style. What is it? Again, uh, it's a... Paratalapia polonite. It's one of the uh, endangered Madagascars. Really? Well, it's too bad to hear it's endangered. Yeah, they're having a lot of environmental issues over there. Their, their government is trying to recover some. Uh, Paul Ozell is doing a lot of efforts to uh, uh, get them to be more conservation aware. Get a good shot of him. I love his personality, though. He's just looking right at you. I love his eyeballs. He looks like a cartoon character. Hey, bud. And then over here, what are these guys? I saw one of these guys flashing a minute ago. It was yeah, nuts. these are uh, Cipacromus leptostoma, the so-called blue flash. One of the oh, Tanganyikans. That's why they're named blue flash, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are awesome. These are all Tanganyikans, right? Mm -hmm. How do they spawn? Uh, they're totally open water spawners. They don't, uh, they don't uh, have eggs that float or sink. They don't need a substrate or surface. Uh, the eggs are kind of neutral buoyancy. And the female will lay an egg back up and grab it and pick it up in her mouth. And I'm out for Here's one. Oh, we yeah. Tell us, uh, she's got a mouthful of fry right now. But, uh, probably do to let those go at some point. And they just kind of carry them around? And, mm -hmm. and then going to the other side of the world, South American, these are the festivums. Mm -hmm. And then you got the children and the parents, right? Yeah. I think mom's ready to go again, that's why she keeps trying to run the youngsters away. And that's dad back there? Yeah. How long have you had these guys? Um, probably three or four years. Wow. Those are cool. Any uh, any tips on breeding these guys? I know they like a little bit lower pH, right? A uh, little lower uh, patients mainly. Uh, they were notorious egg eaters. The first three times they spawned, they ate the eggs. The next three times they ate the wigglers. Next two times they ate the fry, and then finally on the on the ninth spawn they finally allowed some of the fry to live. I had a ton of uh, Java moss in there. I think some of the fry were able to hide the Java moss. Ah. All right, and then moving over here, I love your uh, commitment to the low the low tech you know tanks and the, the you got the ovaceous and the crypts and the black is a what's a hygrophile over there is that the yeah I, I guess I'm not sure I don't know what that is I picked up one of the I uh, think that's on. a hygrophile it could yeah be. probably some some sort but I have no idea what species and those are just uh, some black neons I picked up cheap uh, they're uh, just in quarantine at this point get a little more size on them. They'll eventually go back over with the, with the larger black neons in the oh, Geophagus tank. Okay. And then the yellow labs. Mm -hmm. Love those, man. Always have. I found a particularly yellow strain of them. Yeah, those do look a little more yellow. Those are hot. What I'm holding in there. Which, uh, help me out. Which one's holding? Do you have any idea? Uh, yeah, this one back. And the one under the rock? No, she just at the entrance of the cave. Okay. Oh, okay. I see that. Not as pronounced as the uh, Cipacromos. All right. And then I got a show in true bachelor pad. And, nope. and this is a uh, uh, one of the offspring. That little guy on there? Yeah. He was from a prior spawn. Do you separate them when you get them out? How do you... Uh, no, I just leave them in there. Leave them they in? don't seem to bother them that much. Okay. And then I'm going to show in true bachelor pad style what's well, complete without sitting on the commode and checking out some. Uh, oh, what are, are these? Uh, Rashardi in here? 
Uh, daffodils. Daffodils? Uh, Neil Acrologus pulcher. They're very closely related to daffodils. They have a little more orange in them. I like and those. Maybe a little more of a purplish sheen to them, but so, they're, effectively they, they're the same as daffodils as far as behavior and breeding. Wow. So they got the, I see that yellow on that, the orange is yellow on top is what you're... Yeah, the orange is what, what makes them daffodils. There's a difference in the face. Man, those are uh, Jewel on the cheek uh, has a different... Um, uh, the chevron, I think they call it that. I can't remember the difference, but there's a little uh, mark on their on their gill plate cheek that's different between daffodil and bichardi. But the main thing is the orange uh, uh, along the dorsal line. Really, uh, the baby in there? Or? Oh yeah, there's uh, really about five adults, and all the rest of those were raised in there. Wow. What's great about them is they will breed, and then they'll the older fry will look after the younger ones. Until really? Good generation. That's the only fish I know that'll do that. The Bashar whole Bashardi complex, and normally the fish don't trust the older siblings to uh, look after the other fry, but they actually put them to work. So you can have multiple generations or multiple spawns. Really? So that's why you see all the stair step sizes of uh, fish in there. But okay. basically, there's five adults, and then all the rest of those are, are uh, offspring of various. Uh, Previous broods. I didn't know that Bashardi could we were uh, looked out for the other. Yeah, they, they were remarkable fish. I've got some videos uh, when I had them in a community tank, particularly. They were really good about trying to keep the other fish away from them. And now you just keep them all in one species. And yeah, they just they had this little nook in the bathroom. I mean, what are they going to do with that? Yeah, hey, you, you nailed it, is what you did. That's you know, <laughs> put a towel rack in there. I mean, yeah. Really. Yeah, a towel rack or a thing of Bashardi. That's a cool, what is that, like a 40 square or whatever? It's, something like yeah, that. I think it's 38 or something like that. That's awesome. But I had the tank. That was my smallest tank. I don't really like little tanks. So, uh, but I had this, you know, that was just a good way to utilize that little place. And then, Steve, I want to come out here and then I want to ask you a question about your, uh, what you got, what going on here, and then I want to talk about your maintenance routine out here. These tanks all look real sharp. What do, what do we got going in here? We got some uh, this the is, little tetras. Yeah, this is uh, mostly Asian except for the corridors. Uh, this is my nano tank. I even have it labeled as a nano. Oh, clearly it's a nano, yeah. What, 45 gallon nano? Uh, 72. 72? Okay. Yeah. I don't like little tanks, as I mentioned. Yeah. I've um, got uh, Raspora Hets. There's another Raspora type called Pectinocypris, or just long, skinny, uh, basically silverfish. Uh, and I've got uh, uh, Tetrazona barbs in there, Penazona barbs in there. Penazona? And then uh, sorted shrimp. I like Miraback tanks. It makes the tank look deeper. It, it's kind of a force multiplier for schools. The only problem is the schooling fish tend to stay closer to the mirror because that's where, that's the, where the rest of the fish are. Huh. So uh, they don't always come out that much. It's not that easy to see them. The tank's a little over over planted, but uh, everybody's happy in there. I've got a mono shrimp. I've got some small uh, so the cherries and just some various miscellaneous uh, assorted small shrimp yeah these are cool they like they hang out on that what is it called swasser tang or what's the yeah. mm -hmm. and you guys have that all over your uh, your club Let's yeah see. that makes the round some this is uh, I did intentionally buy that I think it must have come in on another plant and it just kind of took up residence there's driftwood under both of those globs of that stuff oh. and there'll be little patches that float around I'll, I'll usually take it out to keep it taking over the tank but it's pretty good about it. once it, it starts sticking to something, it just grows in place. Nice. Now, Steve, i got to ask you, you got all these tanks. It's all about making it easy. How do you do maintenance on these? Like, what is your routine? I know you've got canisters and hang-on-backs. Like, what's, what's your kind of style with filtering and then maintenance? 